This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter out of London, England. His name is Aken Soul. Mr. Soul, how you doing today, sir? I'm doing good. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Thank you for joining the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. You have a uh, interesting, great story. Um, you sent me some immersed information. Excuse me. And uh, I just couldn't wait to get you on the show. Um, you have a new single that's out called I Want You. And right. when I tell you, I think it's I think it's a jam. I really do. Um, it is a great song, and hopefully we'll be able to play it later on in the interview. Um, but before we get into all of that, tell us about Mr. Atkinson. Well, um, I'm from South London, first of all. I was actually born in Dallas, Texas. That's a little fun fact. But wow. um, I ended up in South London. This is where I was. Um, I grew up, and most of my influences kind of like um, this is where it came from. But um, I'm a soul, neo soul, jazz, R and B, good music <laughs> musician. Um, I take influence from. Layla Hathaway, Kim Burrell, um, Amy Winehouse, Dina Washington, Ella Fitzgerald. Um, you know, I could go on for days, but it's just like soul, jazz music um, is where I just, I just love good music. You know, D'Angelo, Erica Badu. You know, I could sit down for days naming these crazy, like amazing musicians that I love to listen to all the time. And, um, I just enjoy doing good music. So I, I'm a singer, uh, I play keys, I play guitar, and I play trombone. But I don't want to say too much without you asking all the questions. Oh, no, no, man. Keep going. Keep yeah. going. Um, um, yeah, keep going. I, um, so I knew I wanted to do music from a younger age. And so I started performing from the age around 12. And I went through secondary school taking all these opportunities. I think in America, you know, that secondary school is, um, that's, is that the elementary? No, it's the, it's the one after elementary. It's kind of junior elementary. high school? Or junior high school. school, exactly. High school and such middle school kind of thing. Um, I knew that I wanted to do music. So I took every opportunity that I ever was given. Um, and I performed at Greenbelt Festival through those years. Um, a festival in Bermondsey, which is in London. It's um, a carnival, a couple other carnivals and just little things over there. But I really feel like those developed me to come to a certain point. Um, I always say to myself that like, I'm happy I did those farm gigs, you know, the gigs in the farm that maybe there's only three people watching, but you're practicing performing and like, you've got to have those kind of gigs to get to a, a gig where it starts to become more of an audience and people are engaging with you. So uh, I, I performed through those years and around um, year 11, which is around the age of like 14, 15, um, I started playing keys because I knew that I always wanted to play keys. And I was, I just said to myself, look, um, I'm going to do it now. Like, I really want to pick it up and I wasn't amazing at first but I feel like through the years definitely took um just listening and just enjoying the piano and eventually it came to a point where I could start to write songs with the piano that's where I really wanted to be to have that control of writing those neo soul kind of like songs and uh I've just always looked up to like Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonder and how they can sit down at the keys and write a song and D'Angelo. I mean, that's how where I'm trying to be, you know what I'm saying? In the studio, doing that sort of thing. 
so um, I started playing keys, started playing guitar, um, and then I eventually moved to college and I uh, created my band called Akin Soul and the Soul Tribe. It's a 12 piece band. Well, originally it was a 12 piece band. So it had horns in it, strings, BVs, keys, the guitar, and the bassist, and the drummer, and me up front. And ever since then, I, I mean, I, I've always had this sense of um, just a drive to just do what I want to do. I said I want to have a 12 piece band, like a jazz band. So I did it, you know. And people kind of thought I was crazy, but I did it absolutely. And teachers commended me for it. It was, it was quite jokes. I never thought it was something abnormal actually, because I just thought I want a twelve piece. Dad, kind of, let me bring it here. But they're like, you know, that's it's not the usual kind of thing. But yeah, that's where it started with me performing live. And uh, through the two years, um, these past two years, me and um, the band, which I named Akin Soul and the Soul Tribe, um, we've been touring around London. Um, we played at Nambuco, Pop Brixton, Techno Levels. Um, I'm not sure, obviously, you might not be familiar with these venues because it's down in London, but um, we've been around and just getting to know each other. And now I feel like there's a lot of chemistry in the band. We know each other. It's, it's a family kind of thing. Okay. And we've come to this point where um, I finally released this tune, I Want You, which I worked on for like three years. And that's my debut tune. Um, uh, and it was played on BBC Radio um, and Jazz FM, a couple stations down here in London, um, a station in Manchester, and you know it's just it's I'm just trying my best to reach out more and just play um, in as many places as possible. And I'm working on my other projects. I've got loads of songs that I've been doing. You know what I mean? So I'm hoping to just get more and more of my songs out. Because I feel like I Want You was the start of me, but it was just only a little like, taste of what who I am, I feel like. Okay, well, if, if I Want You is just a start, I can't wait to hear your future stuff. <laughs> Thank you, man. Um, so you knew early on that you wanted to be into music. Yeah. Okay, did you come from a family of music or was music, how, how did the love for music? Uh, come about. I mean, so my relationship with music is, I always feel like it's, it's, it was a natural relationship. It wasn't anything that was ever like forced upon me. However, I did grow up in the church. And so music was always around me in the church for starters. And my mom's a singer. Uh, she writes songs as well. And so she must have been singing to me whilst I was in the belly. Or, and I do remember time my mom would sing to me um, going to bed as well. My dad can sing, my brother's a saxophonist, and so that also helps with like just him hearing music all the time and just uh, him handing me some opportunities, like my first performance. I mean, he didn't really hand it to me on a platter, but I remember through him, that's where I, I clinged onto the performance and tried to jump into the industry myself and try to pave a way for myself. And I, I learned that uh, I had to grow and, you know, I'm still growing, but a lot of it is worth. It took a while to uh, get my own craft and know who I actually was and know who I want to be. Okay. And you said, uh, I Want You is your debut. Um, yeah. It, single now, is there an EP or coming following that or it's just this for right now? So my plan is I want you a couple more singles. I just want people to gain the buzz and like know who I am more before I just put out an uh, EP because I want it to reach to as many people as possible. So I think and that's my marketing strategy. Man. Okay, I uh, did some research before we, um, before we spoke um, and I checked out your YouTube channel and um, I Want You, um, was it just released in May or yeah. when? May, okay. May the third of May, third of May. Yeah, well, you got quite a bit of views seeing that, um, you know, your debut and you just getting started. I think I saw like 19, 20,000 views. So, um, you know, you're doing something right. People like it. <laughs> Thank you, man. But what's been the, uh, what's been the response over in London? I said, you said you're touring all over London, playing in different yeah, rooms. Yeah. How do people respond to it? 
Uh, I've absolutely gotten really nice, really cool responses. Like um, these people coming to me after the show, being like, "Yo, your band's amazing! Like this is such an experience and performing. It's, it's always been lovely to hear the same thing." Um, you know, as a musician, you know, you always go backstage, even though there could be like five whole people who come to you directly and tell you how good a show was. I'll go backstage and be like, damn, I missed that line or uh, my voice um, was a bit cracky at the end. But, you know, these people don't necessarily hear that kind of, um, those kind of things. Like, um, you know, that's something a musician knows, their own instrument. But also, like, I remember this show in specifically, um, it was at Port Brixton uh, and the music, basically there was this whole situation where um, the show had to get cut off um, because of some background thing that was happening with something to do with security and a whole load of nonsense. But I was supposed to be the um, main act at the end, so I was supposed to like finalise the show and it came to the time I was um, on my second song and they came to the front of the stage and they were like, you need to stop the set now. We're dead in it off, otherwise we're going to cut out the sound. So they cut out the sound um, in the middle of my song, not, not even letting me finish. They come to me in the middle of my song, <laughs> telling me that we're going to, you guys need to let me finish my song. That was going on in my head. And, um, but yeah, they cut it off. And I remember the whole crowd singing the song like with me and my band and I was just like, whoa, like everyone's singing this song, singing the chorus. It was really cool. Um, okay. Yeah, like I just remember that moment. And it's like people have been engaging and listening to the song and people come back to me and go, like, hey, when's the next show? Uh, when's that song coming out that you always do um, in your live show? Okay. How, um, you don't mind me asking, uh, I can't, um, how old are you? I'm 18. Team. Man, you have a uh, such a soulful, um, mature voice for someone who's eighteen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I wish I was eight. When I was eighteen, I wish I had a voice like that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so when I listen to "I Want You," I it kind of reminds me of another. I think they're out of England. Uh, Mtume. Um, Mtume. Yeah. I love to search. Let me write that down. Um, I've never actually heard of them too many. Yeah, I think they do a song called Juicy Fruit. Um, and then another group called Soul to Soul. Yeah, Soul to Soul. Yeah. So when I hear your music, kind of kind of reminds me of that. Oh, that's, that's real cool. I really appreciate that. Yeah. So uh, I Want You, you wrote and produced that yourself? Um, it was co-produced with Steve Holmes and co-written with Steve Holmes. Yeah. I it all came about when I was getting key lessons from him and we were playing around with a song called I Get Lonely by Janet Jackson. Um, I mean like I could play you try and play you um a little bit of how it came about if you wanted to. Sure. Yeah, um but I'll just talk a little bit about it. So he Steve Holmes was giving me lessons. Um, this is the first by the way on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. An artist is breaking out a song. <laughs> um yeah he he like taught me the progression for i get so lonely i don't know if you know that song mm -hmm. yeah i love that song so much and um he gave me a task to play around with the progression and i was just chilling at my mate's house um and literally um i broke it down and there was just these three chords that i just fell in love with and instantly i was just like i want you to I'll try and play it down here. I'm just setting it up and trying to talk at the same time so that I can like not set a break. But um, I don't want to leave silence with you. Right, it's just loading up. Yeah. But no I just problem. want you guys to like kind of hear how it came about because I never, I've never really got the opportunity to like play around to show you guys the recreate that moment that I had. Uh, so it's just coming out of... Now, you said while we're waiting, you said that this song was uh, three years in the making? Yeah, literally. So it, it this happened three years ago. Like, I don't know if you can hear that. I can hear it, yeah. So this is I Get Lonely. 
I remember just being at my friend's house and I was just there like Ah I was just like really feeling that vibe and I gave it to myself. I was like, that's not a song, so <laughs> let that be me. Yeah. Uh, um, and yeah, from there, I Want You was created, created um, and I wrote the lyrics to it. Um, and me and Steve got together in the studio. Um, he's been so helpful with that project. We spent so much time in the studio. Like I said, three years, like it was just, years of sitting on the track, um, trying to develop it and being like, are we ready? Is this ready to be released? No, let's work on it a bit more. Crit Steve helped me to create a pre-chorus progression for it. And yeah. Okay. Let me ask you, so since it was uh, three years in the making and you completed it, and how do you know um, when you know you got it? You know, okay, well, this is done. This is, this is it. We got it. How do you... How do you know that? How do you get to that point? I don't think I can say, okay, I've got it now, but um, I think it's a case of listening to like people that you respect and like listening to your own music as well. Not necessarily comparing, but like um, listening to your music and just being like, is this good stuff? But I mean, at the same time, this is the thing, I was talking to this um, a mentor of mine the other day and we were just talking about how you would always think that your music's good, you know, even <laughs> it might be the wackiest thing ever, but you made it and you're like, you'll come up to someone and be like, hey, look at this, this is amazing, you know, you'll get all the time. And that was me two, three years ago saying, oh, look at this, this is, isn't this cool? But I'm like, nah, it's whack now. So it's me looking back at my progression and being like, okay, I can play keys and I can write a whole song um, with, you know, even today, I mean, this is a little spoiler, but um, I was messing around with... Dun, dun. You know what I mean? You just play around. If I can write to, I want to write to that level of um, having, you know, verse, chorus. I mean, not necessarily that structure, but do you know what I mean? Just having good stuff around. And right. I, really for me, being able to play keys and guitar, and having that access to harmony has been such a tool in terms of songwriting. Okay. Um, yeah, well, congratulations on such a great song. I think this is a good time Thank to pause. You. We're going to pause and play uh, I Want You. This is Akin So and I Want You on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Enjoy. Boy.
Continue our episode after this message. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. All right, I can't. We're back. Uh, man, great song. Um, Thank you. Now, let me ask you. Um, that took three years to put together. Are you working yeah. on new stuff that you might release a little sooner than maybe three years? Um, I mean, in the long term, I've got a plethora of songs that I've written since. Um, so I'm definitely getting ready to release them. But I'm just thinking in the best way, I don't want to just plop on these songs. I'm um, working on my next project that I'd want to um, release for about next month in July, late July, I'll be out. Um, so I've just done a, a photo shoot for that recently and I'm getting onto a video shoot for that. And okay. the production of that's almost done. It's just um, a few more instruments to be added on. But that project is more, is more of a deeper into soul kind of project. You can expect a bit of blues in it and uh, a bit of funk. I like Not that. saying too much. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so you have a real vast um, taste in music. Yeah, you man. Hit a bunch of different genres, which is great. Um, I think that makes Thank it you. more appealing to all kind of listeners out there. So, congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, man. I'm just trying to be me and just trying to like um, well, keep myself fine. You're doing what you're doing, man. Now, you said you were born in Dallas, Texas. Yeah. Um, when did you move to uh, London? Literally, it wasn't even at, like too long till after I was born there. So I, j I was just literally born there. Okay. And my parents and my family, we, we went back into London um, and continued the rest of our lives here. But in another lifetime, I suppose I could have <laughs> continued my lifetime in Dallas, Texas, and might have been an American, fully American. So. Okay. <laughs> Now, you said earlier that you're 18. Um, what kind of advice would you give um, people who are about maybe around your age and maybe trying to pursue a music career? What kind of advice would you give them um, going forward? To believe in yourself and like, I mean, belief is like number one, because I feel like belief ties everything or like anything, any action you want to do. Belief is where it starts. Songwriting belief is where it starts. Performing belief is where it starts. You know, uh, a lot of those things. And you should continue to grow and don't settle. Continue to grow and, and listen to people. Um, not soak in necessarily what everyone says, but do listen to what everyone says. Because, you know, everyone in life has some, something to say. Network as much as possible and don't stop being hungry, you know. If you're hungry, you, you, I believe 
you're going to get somewhere. All right. Now, are you a um, completely independent artist or are you signed to a label? What? I'm currently independent, um, but label business is um, just, it's, it's not official yet. Okay. So you are talking to other labels or major labels? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And is that the, I assume that's the avenue you want to pursue? Uh, a lot more backing, that kind of thing? Um, I mean, I do really encourage in this day and age that uh, it's like quite easy to be an independent musician. I think, especially my music, I realize I want to be more independent, just in, in a way that I want to start off independent and make sure people know that, okay, I've got people on my side or like an audience that want to listen, you know, when it comes to that. And so that uh, a label can, you know, give me the right offer and not take control of my music. I want to be able to um, control what I'm releasing to to the greatest extent I can. And the music that I'm making, uh, it, it's really important to me. It's not just about the music, just making any old song. It's about making a good song. I don't want to do nothing trash. I've had a lot of experience of um, different people trying to work with me and trying to make me do things I don't want to do. They got to go away, <laughs> move out of this pathway because I, I kind of I know what I want to do. Okay, well, it sounds like you're driven. You know what you want. So, uh, kudos to you for being so young and having that that drive or that know knowing Thank what you, you want. Um, all right, uh, Ken, I know that performing probably is out of the question right now because of COVID. Um, but when you get back out there, um, hopefully you can tour the U.S. at some point. I think people will oh, love man, to I'd here. love to. I'd love to. And that's probably something that will come at least, like, I'd say next year. I want to do a bit more marketing, get a lot of people on my side. Um, and that would be that would be 100% really cool I'd definitely love to come and tour in the year okay and people can reach you on all I'm assuming all the social media sites I mentioned yeah. your YouTube channel earlier uh, yeah. please go subscribe um, I think this this guy has uh, some good things coming down the line now before we get out of here I just got a question for you and it's always kind of bugged me I watch shows um, this is not related to music at all but um, I, I watch shows that are British shows, I guess. What's the difference between a pound and a quid? A pound and a quid. That's always <laughs> irked me. And I never, people say, oh, it's the same thing. I said, oh, it's the same thing. Why don't they call it the same thing? What, what's the difference? Like we have here, like, as you probably know, dollars and cents. Yeah. Um, you know, 90, I mean, hundred cents make up a dollar. So I'm yeah. just trying to figure out what's the, the difference between a pound and a quid because I hear them used all the time. I'm like, okay, what is a pound and a quid? A quid is a pound, <laughs> but a penny is a hundred pennies is one pound is equivalent to a pound. So, so it's like dollars and cents. So yeah, like hundred quid so is one pound. Dollars, do, a dollar is. Well, not necessarily because I don't know the exact currency, but like a dollar would be cast as like a pound. You know what I mean? Like a, a dollar note is like a pound coin. Okay. Similar. They're similar. All but right. um, it's similar to a quid. Can have one quid. Can have one pound. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so... <laughs> to me, it's like... It's like... It's like... It's, 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 but I get it because it's like sense and but just think a quid is literally a pound so a quid and pound is the same word but pennies are the like a hundred pennies equals one pound pennies okay. are the smaller the smaller um the okay. smaller kind of like money thing for, all right for so uh, so are you saying like a hundred quid equals a pound um no no. 100 quid equals 100 you know what man pounds. i'm gonna research it because i i'm getting more and more what more no this is 100 100 quid equals 100 pounds one pound equals one quid yeah okay um all right well i have to 
Well, thanks for trying to break that down for me. I can't. Is there still no all? Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna have to kind of understand it a little bit, but because I, I, I guess I'm sort of equating it to dollars and cents. Yeah, and um, uh, so maybe that's my confusion. Maybe I have to overthink nah. it just a little bit. Because you've got you've got pounds and pennies. That's similar to dollars and cents. You know what I mean? Okay. Nah? All right, I can't. Sorry about that. I guess we had some technical difficulties. Um, so where can um, where can people reach out to you uh, once you plug uh, your website and your social media sites? So I've got a website, akinsoul.com. Um, on my website, you can find my Instagram, which is akinsoul. Um, I was going to say akinsoul.com, but it's akinsoul <laughs> again on my Instagram. And my Twitter is akinsoul. On my Facebook, it's akinsoul and the soul tribe. Um, www.facebook.com slash a t a s t. I try my best to remember the actual link, so plug it, but I'm sure we can put it down. In yeah, the I'll put it in the show too. notes and also on, uh, on our website at bringmyselfmusic.com. <laughs> and that's Akin, A K I N, correct? Yeah. Akin, so S O U. Akin, so A K I N S O U O, indeed, yes. Okay. Right. So, Akin, let me ask you, um, who were some, I mean, you mentioned some of the greats earlier, Marvin Gaye, yeah. et cetera. Uh, who else were some of your influences? I can definitely thank the American Neo Soul and Soul scene, especially going back to the 90s. So um, when I was about 12 or 13, I spent a couple years just digging in the 90s and I, I was almost convinced that I was living in the 90s myself. I was listening to Aaliyah, listening to Destiny's Child, listening to um, Backstreet, listening to Mary J. Blythe, Faith Evans, you know, all, all that kind of music. And I just, I just love the slow jams and they just got so, so many good chords and it's just, Good music, I believe, and you know, going back to I, I was mentioning Eric Badu and D'Angelo, but I can definitely say a lot of American music has influenced me. Um, you know, even Legacy, so many artists down in America that just they've got beautiful music, and it's it's from the soul, and that's where I'm trying to be at. Okay, well, those are some great artists, and you know, all of a sudden I feel old now because I remember <laughs> those artists. <laughs> <laughs> from the 90s and they're still going on i mean they're still putting out great music okay yeah. um well yeah thanks for sharing that man and um yeah uh, i mean because I, I do have to say as well though i do have to thank the uk because they're definitely soul legends i just want to say quickly you know such as omar uh, misha paris um you know flow a tree a lot a lot of people in the uk do have to thank for the near soul scene you know is it's a mix of american you know i i am really appreciative of being from the uk and I'm, I'm about it now you know what i mean yeah i mean well there's great music everywhere and mm. uh, you know people are inspired i mean i'm a big elton john fan and i know he's from the uk so yeah I mean, there's a lot of good music everywhere um you just got to be a fan of music so um but yeah that's fantastic man all right, Akin, I appreciate you uh, joining the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast today, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me again. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for reaching out to me, and uh, good luck with everything, man. I hope it all works out. I Want You is a great song, and uh, we'll be on the lookout for you, man. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Uh, hopefully this journey rides out well. I'm sure you're going to be fine, man. People will find you. <laughs> People will find you. That's Akin Soul on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Atkin Soul. You can find out more about Atkin on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. 
If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'm Todd Woodson. See you next week.